Okay, we're going to continue with uh, simplifying radicals in terms of the application of using what is known as Pythagorean theorem with right triangles. So first, let's talk about Pythagorean theorem and what that is. So Pythagorean theorem is the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And it's used to solve uh, right triangles and find the lengths of the sides of right triangles. So for this particular one, C is always referred to as our hypotenuse. Now, where is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is always the side which is the longest and is located opposite the right angle. Okay, so this is our C. Now, what sides are A and B? It really doesn't matter. Uh, what you can remember are they are the two sides that make the right angle. Those are your two and that's your A and B. So I'm going to call this one A. I'm going to call this one B. Again, it really doesn't matter for A and B particularly. So we're just going to plug those values straight into Pythagorean Theorem. And then we're going to go ahead and work this out. So we have A squared plus. Now, since this is a group of values, we're going to put those in parentheses. 4 square root of 2 squared equals c squared. Now, you can utilize your calculator here. Uh, just understand that when it wants it in simplest radical form, that means when you do your final answer, you're going to have to be able to break down uh, the square roots. And that's what our previous lesson was dealing with, was how to simplify radicals. So if you go ahead and type uh, this portion right here in on your calculator, and you can type all that in. Make sure you use parentheses appropriately and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you'll end up getting, I'm going to do it step by step, 49 plus 32 equals C squared. So you combine 49 and 32. If you do that, you get 81 equals C squared. Then you're going to take the square root. And so in this particular case, you get 9, exactly, because 81 is a perfect square. So for this one, you don't have to do a simplified radical. You just type in 9. Now, that's not always going to be the case. We'll see if we can do another example where we actually have to simplify the radical. Okay, so again, find the length of the third side, third side right in simplest radical form. Okay, so for this particular one, we've got... Our hypotenuse is right here. So really, this is our C. Now, what side's this? Again, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to call it A. So we go with our formula. What's up? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So in this particular case, I've got 5 squared equals, oops, sorry, not equals, plus B squared equals, and then my C is square root of 41 squared. So I get 25 plus B squared equals, and that's going to be 41, subtract 25, subtract 25, so I get B squared equals, okay, so again, we get one here that's a perfect square. Square root, so B equals 4, so this particular one would be 4. So again, we did not have to necessarily simplify the radical because we got a perfect square number again. <laughs> Alright, again, leave your answer in simplest radical form. Let's look at it. So this one's a little bit harder, okay? Here's what we're trying to solve for ultimately. But in order to do that, I've got to have this side right here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually try to break this part, problem apart, okay, into two portions. So I'm going to get rid of this right now. And all I'm going to do is focus on this particular triangle. And then I'll come back and then implement that into the other triangle. So again, what's this? This is my hypotenuse. Okay, so that's my C. Uh, again, whatever you want to call this, I'll call this as B, and here's my A. So we're going to 
Use our formula again, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I've got a squared plus 5 squared equals 9 squared. So a squared plus 25 equals 81. Subtract 25. Subtract 25. A squared equals, okay, this would be, what, 56? All right. So here's one that is not a perfect square. So this one we are going to have to break down. So we take square root. So from our previous lesson, remember thinking about perfect squares. So the first one, since it's an even number I go with, I always try 4. Okay, so this would be 4 times 14. What's the square root of 4? Square root of 4 is 2. 14 does not break down because it's 2 and 7. Okay, both of which are prime numbers, neither of which has a perfect square. So that's 14. So that's what this side is, 2 square root of 14. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. I'm going to erase all this stuff. I'm also going to go back to the original problem. So let's try to reveal it here. Okay. And now let's just get this triangle. Okay, so now I've got this. So I'm getting rid of all this stuff right now. And I'm just going to focus on this triangle. Now, I'm going to have to identify the parts of it. So I'm going to get rid of the A here. Because for this triangle, the parts are a little different. Why? What is this now? This is now my C. Okay, I'm going to call this my A. And then here's my B, or X in this particular case. Okay, so again, let's go with our formula. A squared plus B squared equals c squared. So 6 squared plus, we can call this x now since that's what it is, equals what, 2 on the score, square root of 14 squared. So I've got 36 plus x squared equals, and remember that was 56. Subtract 36, subtract 36. So x squared equals 20. Now I have to take the square root. So here's another one I've got to simplify. Okay, so 20 is not a perfect square. So what's a, again, it's an even number. So I always try 4. And 4 will go into it. 4 times 5. Again, the square root of 4 is 2. 5 is a prime. Will not break down anymore. So there is my x. 2 on the square root of 5. So a little more difficult problem just because it's not one triangle. It's multiple triangles connected and you kind of got to go through the process there. <laughs> okay, what about this one? We have a word problem now. An altitude is drawn from the vertex of an isosceles triangle. So let's talk about an isosceles triangle real quick. Isosceles triangle is one where you have two sides equal. Okay, so that means these mean equal sides. You'll learn that in geometry. So an altitude goes from the top straight down to make a right angle. So really what we have are two small right triangles inside of this. As a result, it says the altitude cuts the base into two equal segments. The length of the altitude is 13. So this is all about labeling now. So this is 13. And the length of the base is 8 inches. Okay, now when we talk about the base, we're talking about this whole thing here is 8 inches. So what it wants here is that now is 4. It says find the triangle's perimeter around to the nearest tenth of an inch. So here I don't have to simplify radicals. I really just have to do Pythagorean theorem. So what I've got is... In this particular problem, there's my C. This could be my A, and the 13 could be my B. So now I've got A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 16 plus, that's 169, equals C squared. 
add that together and you get 185 equals c squared. You're going to take the square root of that. Now again, because it says round to the nearest tenth of an inch, you're not having to simplify the radical here. So if you look at the square root of 185, you get approximately 13.6. So that means this is 13.6, this side is 13.6. Now remember, it told us the whole base here was 8. So how do you get perimeter? You're just going to add all those together. So if I had to add 13.6 and 13.6, I believe that gives me 27.2. Add another 8, and that should give me 35.2 inches, again rounding to the nearest tenth. Okay, one more word problem. A 20-foot ladder is set against the side of a house. So this may seem ridiculous, but I like to do this. I like to draw pictures. Okay, so there's my house, and then I have this ladder. Okay, so... Here's my ladder, and that's 20 feet. Okay. And it says it reaches up to 16 feet, so that means this is 16 feet right here. That's how high up on the house I get. If Christian grabs the ladder at its base and pulls it two feet farther from the house, how far up the side of the house will the ladder reach now? Okay, so what happens? So physically, if I pull this ladder out, remember the length of the ladder is not changing. All that happens is the ladder slides down on the house. Okay, so again, here's my house. My ladder has slid down, but it's still 20 feet, okay? So originally, I don't know how far this was, but I can find that. Again, how did I do that? By doing Pythagorean theorem. So if I label this, there's my right angle. So this is my C, here's A, and here's B. So I've got, let me pull this up here, a squared plus 16 squared equals 20 squared. b squared plus, if you do 16 squared, that's 256 equals 400. Subtract 256 from both sides. If you do that, you get a squared equals 144. Take the square root of that, and this is a perfect square. And that is 12. Okay. So that means originally it's 12 feet away. So now what have I done? I've pulled it two feet farther from the house. So now how far is this distance? This distance is now 14. Remember the length of my ladder doesn't change, 20. But what has changed is this, how high up it goes. Now think logically with me for a second here with a triangle. If this number right here gets larger, sorry, that gets larger than this one, but this number maintain, then obviously this number has to get smaller. So this number is going to have to be something less than 16. Now again, how do I go about doing that? I'm just going to do Pythagorean theorem. So here's my C again, because there's my right angle. We'll leave this as A, and this time we're finding B. So I have A squared, plus b squared equals c squared. So that's 196 plus b squared equals 400. So, oops, sorry. Subtract 196. So if I do that, I get b squared equals 204. Now, again, this says round to the nearest tenth of a foot. So I'm going to have to take the square root. So here... I just use my calculator again, and once I punch that in, that comes out to about 14.3. So B is approximately 14.3 if you round it to the nearest tenth. Okay, so that makes sense. Remember, it had to be something smaller than 16 over here. So again, some correlation. Now they're not direct. That's why I said it is not 14 feet but it is close to it. So hopefully now you have an application of the reason why you need to learn how to simplify radicals, but also its application when you need to just go ahead and round um, in a particular case like these when you have word problems.